This is a special on uh, uh, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull and uh, Nikki Sava. Um, I had a, read a report this morning from Nikki Sava written in 2014. And that's what's inspired this. Some things should not happen, but they do. Here I thread the needle of how Malcolm Turnbull's backstab ter Tony Abbott for the Prime Minister's position. It is illustrated on the day of Abbott's tremendous achievement of removing the carbon tax July the 17th, 2014. Nikki Sava, partisan journalist, wrote a bizarre article directing Shorten and Abbott to steer clear from PUP founder Clive Palmer. Neither Shorten nor Abbott would ever pay much attention to Sava, so her direction to them was not the point of the article. It is now clear she was gloating over the plans of taking out Abbott in favour of Turnbull. Quote, if the past few years have taught us anything, it is that once trashed, reputations are almost impossible to rebuild. An exceptional practitioner of the art could manage it. End quote. The reason for giving space to Palmer was so Turnbull could play the role of mediator with the Senate. It was Turnbull's job to promise the Senate that he could deal with them better, and would be better if he was Prime Minister. It is like that joke meme of a dad making his son President of the World Bank by marrying him to Bill Gates' hypothetical daughter. The result being that a boy with nothing but good looks could rule through influence peddling. However, Turnbull promising things to senators was not the sole part of the campaign. Turnbull needed a credible policy platform with widespread support, before he could credibly promise anything. He had attempted co-opting that with AGW hysteria in 09. This time, Julie Bishop was able to funnel foreign aid money to the Clinton Foundation, and this gave Turnbull a suite of policies he could draw on to please everyone who hated Tony Abbott. People may be wondering why Turnbull negotiated a people swap deal with Obama after Trump was elected, but that is part payment of the Clinton Foundation. However, to attract Clive Palmer, Turnbull needed to help him obtain some life goals. One was ending the Campbell Newman Queensland government. To achieve that end, Turnbull needed to bring in expensive support against fracking from Alan Jones, New South Wales radio broadcaster. The campaign was successful and damaging, and has effectively ended safe and responsible gas extraction along the southern and eastern coastlines of Australia. Victoria has even banned conventional extraction. Merely promising things to senators was not the entire campaign. Influence groups like the IPA were promised free speech, as Turnbull used his cabinet presence to reject the Abbott government position of pursuing it against Senate opposition. Bronwyn Bishop's helicopter ride became a point which Turnbull could promise petty revenge. The bizarre campaign of women hating Tony Abbott was used too. Today, Turnbull claims rolling Abbott was a mistake, and so it would be a mistake to roll Turnbull too, but back then the faux women hate Abbott campaign was fed into a number of polls designed to get party pollsters to campaign for Turnbull against a terminal Abbott who could never win without female support. The polls were legitimate and the campaign was real. That is what millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation will get you. And that is why actual conservatives are rejecting Malcolm Turnbull's Liberal Party. And that is why the only sensible course of action the party can take is to have a chance at the next federal election is to roll Turnbull and restore Tony Abbott.